I'm a lot calmer. I've had a lot of room to breathe today since the previous upload today. Uh, just in case people are surfing YouTube and they come upon this video, I will leave a link in the description to the previous video. Obviously, you can just look at the video below this one or next to this one, depending on what your server looks like. And uh, uh, it's the previous video, which will be linked in this video. I've had a lot of time to think about how to more concisely just get to the basic points. I am... Um, it took a lot out of me to oust myself for what I actually did do because as screwed up as what I did do, it's a lot better than the. It's it's a lot better that it's not what I did is better. It's the, it's better that what I'm actually guilty of is what's known rather than what I'm accused of. Um, the source of the problem is. You know, like, I, I always try to make sure that it's not about this, but if there's one thing Dr. Weisfeld has taught me, and he's taught me well, it often will be this. And that's that when you're Jewish, you're already suspicious. Uh, I should tell you some things about this. <laughs> Judaism, at its core has no connection to Zionism, no aspirations for the Holy Land. When the Torah was given on Mount Sinai, it was given in the barren desert. The well, reason why it was given in the barren desert is because, well, it's not supposed to be tied to any one land. The Jewish people were at one time were the custodians of the Holy Land. It's as simple as that. When, when, it was, when we were no longer worthy for it, the land was... We were removed from the land. Now we believe that this was divine intervention, that this happened, and that we were punished for our sins and put into exile, um, and that all, any and all thriving will now from, on, from now on be in the diaspora until a glorious Messiah comes and reconstitutes the Jewish people in the Holy Land. However, what a lot of people don't know is that this would be a mystical change. It wouldn't be done by force, and world peace would already have to exist before the Messiah's arrival. Also, the Messiah is more of an age, and a human messiah would be more like a Rebbe figure that people would just be gravitated to. He wouldn't have to enforce the thing. Therefore, if you are an atheist, this theological point of view is a non-threat to anyone. It is known that Theodor Herzl and all the other early Zionists didn't, not only didn't care about Judaism, they didn't know a single thing about Judaism. They had adopted the Christian Protestant belief in a Jewish race and or ethnicity which is completely fabricated. As some people will say, oh, but look, there's this shows Jewish DNA. There's no Jewish DNA. There's Ashkenazi DNA. There's Sephardi DNA, but there is no Jewish DNA. And the very notion of Jew, uh, the very notion of Jewish DNA is by itself anti-Semitic. So this is just an extension of the previous video in a more calm, precise way. Because I'm basically I'm going to tackle here. The whole point for this is just to tackle the most harmful accusations. Number one, I do not say that Stalin was a Zionist. I never make that fa I, I, I never make that claim. What it is, is I point out, and I'm not the only one that points this out. I think it's kind of funny people like to overfocus on me talking about this, but other people point out the same thing. Joseph Stalin did support the creation of the State of Israel. The most consistent excuse I've heard is that he did this because otherwise the British would have maintained a hegemony over Palestine. Except for the problem with this logic is that the Zionists were much worse. There is no excuse for the support of Zionism. And obviously I'm no Stalin hater. But here's the thing. Um, in the Balfour Declaration, that piece of shit that is the Balfour Declaration, there's one thing that can be said about it. A Jewish state is, is already acknowledged in there along with the Jewish state. There's no such thing as Jewish state. That's a, that's a fucking oxymoron right there. But anyway, those are the facts. There is no excusing this blunder by Stalin. It was an opportunistic move. Or perhaps it was his way of sympathy. You know, some would speculate that. And I, I could believe that. I don't believe Stalin was malicious to Jewish people. I think that he had a lot of 
cultural misunderstandings with Jewish people, but anybody that knows about Stalin, Stalin knows that he was actually very fond of Yiddish. That's, that's a fact. Yeah, I could criticize Stalin without hating Stalin. It's actually very possible. Jewish people need the far left, yet that is where, where we are always most unwelcome. What we need is the far left. We need to be part of the far left, but we're just not welcome there. We are the most unwelcome. I would say the other is trans, and I don't, I don't like to play these mental gymnastics, but yeah, we're more unwelcome. And I would, uh, I'm going to provide a second link, and that's the link with Dark Snovia and uh, Red Pagan Nicole, because they touch upon that very appropriately and very well. It's just kind of funny because we, we can't make it on the far right unless we're Zionists. And to be Zionist is to stop being Jewish, actually, because they, they really just aren't compatible as uh, systems. And, you know, yes, there are there are um, aberrations in Judaism that are not true to Judaism, but Zionism is not even an aberration. It's completely outside of Judaism. It is in no way rooted in Judaism. Besides, the Christian Zionists predate the Jewish Zionists. And not only do they predate the Jewish Zionists, uh... The Christian Zionists, <laughs> not only do they predate them, they the Christian Zionists were the major, were some of the most, were one of the primary backers of the so-called Jewish Zionists. When I first met Kara, she claimed to be an agnostic with a Catholic background. All I ever did was encourage her to utilize the background, you know, to help represent those who are Christian atheists and Christian agnostics. And I won't, don't want to get into the whole spiel about how that actually works, but there is such people. And it is beneficial for any of you who are Christian agnostics and Christian atheists to sometimes just openly say it, because... The lack of saying it is further feeding the notion that there's a Jewish race or ethnicity when there is not. Next. Kara appropriated the term pan-Abrahamic pan from me, misusing it and mangling it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's almost as if she acts as if we don't remember what she was saying before. And I did not put her up to that. In fact, she kind of wanted to represent that line, and I just let her do it. But uh, she very much misused it and abused it because um, the Pan-Abrahamic applies to Jewish, Christian, and Muslim. And in the Christian, it usually refers to Eastern Orthodox Christians and Oriental Orthodox Christians, not so much Western, although there are nuances and exceptions, depending on how sincere a Roman Catholic is, depending on how sincere a Lutheran or an Episcopalian is. That, that, that you know, I think you get the point with that. Um... Uh, I believe I'm on five. I think it's five. One of the Demarchist organizations was Radical Science United. Unfortunately, it lasted for only four years. I didn't know most of them. I think I'm like I can recall knowing two of them briefly, and I don't even say I knew them. I've had I had shared some some conversations with them, and that's pretty much it. Um, but Radical Science United was majority atheists. Now, of course, they didn't believe in atheism because the ism implies an ideological basis. And, and if you're a real atheist, you don't need a freaking ism. Well, I mean, the, I, I suppose the new atheists changed that. But, but you know, screw the new atheists. Um, but yeah, that, um, their, their, business, their biggest interest was climate change and the combating of creation science, which I very much respect because I find creation science to be an affront to the scriptures. And... While I don't particularly agree with using science, I respect science enough to say it is full of facts, and there are competing ways other than just science. But if you're going to claim science, you got you better do science and not creation science. So I am totally down with anybody that wants to rip apart the disgusting terror that is creation science. If we go by science, we are primates. End of story. All right. Despite my uh, the, the next one, um, despite my I, I, despite my disagreements with the ideology of feminism, I enjoy dialogue with real feminists. That's real feminists. You see, unfortunately, in Arizona, we don't have real feminists. We really don't. I mean, there are some, but they're not they're not prevalent, and you know you don't hear from them that much. And 
there are some feminists that I hope to dialogue with on my channel. I would be very, very blessed to do so. Because despite, like I said, an ideological disagreement I have with feminism, I do tend to agree with the grievances of real feminists. Not faux feminists that just want to man-hate all day, but real feminists. Five. In my very last conversations with Cara Stokely, she told me things like, wash your ass and shave your balls. Um, both of which I do, by the way, thank you very much. Didn't need your input for that. And it's not really anybody's in, you know, business, but I just figured I might as well offer that information up. It is true that due to sleep deprivation that I began to think that Lumpenkelt was a neo-Nazi. That's not really true. That was my own paranoia. I didn't really express that, but that had a lot to do with some of my behavior at certain times. And Lumpenkelt, why I consider your view of me and a lot of this dishonest, I do owe you an apology on that. Regardless, regardless, I am sorry. So if you sensed anything weird for me, that's because I had become paranoid because of sleep deprivation, which t sometimes happens. Um, it's not true. Lumpen Kelt is not a neo-Nazi. Um, and there's nothing more to say about that. Um, next. Demarchist theory is new. It's new. And it didn't have itself fully figured out in the beginning. The first... The first self-proclaimed Demarchist uh, started this theory, his theories in the, in the 2000s, uh, but this theory would actually officially get developed in the 2010s. And the last, which would be the 10th point, the last point is that positionism is a lie. Now, it was Herbert Dillon who actually first said we were fourth positionists, and the reason for this is the idea behind it is, okay, the first position is capitalism, liberalism, and then the second position is uh, Marxism, anarchism, and then the third position is uh, fascism, corporatism, Nazism. And a fourth position would be more like the second position, but more democratic. Not to say, and it's not to say that anarchists and Marxists don't believe in democracy. It's just that there's no... There's no understanding and no invest, despite the no investigation, no, in, no right to speak. Um, when I know certain facts about something, but I can't get a communist, whether Marxist or anarchist, to listen, and this is this is not a universal, by the way. But the fact that the fact that Marxists and anarchists do not universally investigate certain things that they that they think is outdated or needs to be assimilated, and yes, I am using the harshest words I can because that's what I've seen. And you even get this sometimes with third world communists, which is why the third world doesn't really have prevalent all the time with communists. Although there are a lots of lots of pockets in the third world with communists, and there's revolutionaries in general all over the third world. You know, let let's be real. You know, a lot of them are turned off completely to Marxism, and anarchism would seem pretty utopian to most of them. So, although a lot of that is changing, I think in the Maoist context, because let's be honest, real revolutionaries in the third world that are that say they're communists, are, they're going to be Maoists. Sometimes they'll be Marxist-Leninist, um, but, it, but it was, it's going to really depend on, on the tendency of that as well. So, um, I just realized, you know, that the first video definitely gives away a lot of information, which pretty much I throw myself under the bus with. But, and, and that last video was very chaotic, but it's the first link in the description here, because like, if you want to know the inside scoop, that's the inside scoop. This is just a clarification video. Uh, but the second link I will provide below is the link to that wonderful conversation with Red Peg and Nicole and Dark Snovia, which I'm sure certain people think that I orchestrated that too, because I'm everybody. Don't you know? I'm Mr. Smith. <laughs> Fucking Christ.